Hi, this is Ron Vanderlinden. I coach the linebackers at Penn State and have for 10 years. Uh, in the DVD you're about to watch are the concepts and techniques and fundamentals that I use here at Penn State to coach our linebackers. The stance starts the play. In a stance, a proper stance, gives a football player or any athlete in any sport the best opportunity for success on a particular play. As a linebacker, you don't want your feet any wider than your shoulders. Doing so will um, lead to a fault step, a balance step in, and a crossover step. So I want my feet just slightly wider than my shoulders. I want my knees over my toes, my shoulders over my knees, my head and eyes up, and my arms relaxed. At this point, I can step equally well right or left. Now, this is the start of the football play, and, and it does give me the best opportunity for success on a play. What's critical is that I maintain this stance position throughout the course of a football play, and I want to be in this position when I meet the ball carrier, which will give me the best opportunity uh, to stop that ball carrier with no post-contact yardage. Agility and reaction drills. Coach Paterno gives us three minutes at the start of every practice to loosen our players up. The first drill you're seeing here, uh, I like for a variety of reasons. One is the upper body and the lower body work independently of each other. Two is my players are touching footballs, which I want them to be comfortable uh, touching footballs as often as possible. Three, they have to maneuver through obstacles uh, while they keep their eyes focused on the objective, which is the ball, staying low and square as they go. And, and they're getting loosened up, and as they start, they start in a shuffle uh, technique, uh, which is critical for a linebacker to be able to work laterally as quick as he goes uh, straight forward in most cases, staying low, staying square. You can see at the end of the drill, I have my manager throwing a pass. I think every drill that you do should have a finish to it. And, and that finish should, um, in that case, is catching a pass, uh, be completed perfectly. Uh, we, we start a lot of practices. When I first come out of the tunnel before a game, we shuffle. And we shuffle fast. And uh, here we're working, flipping our hips, flipping our hips, working up as if the quarterback throws a check down or a draw. And you can see the players hustling up. Uh, to play the scramble, to play the check down, and then they should fit perfectly uh, in regard to where their responsibility is. The edge player, you're going to see number five turn his body into the ball. He should fit square. That ball carrier dipped and got outside. He wouldn't have to open his hips to flatten to get on the ball. Here we're just shuffling downhill towards that line of scrimmage, shuffling quickly. Reach slide, not crossing over. Should be a reach slide movement. Carrier as the ball carrier changes direction. Club and finish up through. Those were good examples of good finishes, buzzing the feet. 54, a good example of a, of a finish. 46, this is our entire linebacker crew. 33. Those have all been good examples of buzzing the feet right up through and upon contact. And, and by moving those feet quickly and not uh, lunging and not ducking, often a player wants to get to the ball carrier and duck his head and bend at the knees rather than the waist. And, uh, and uh, that removes all of your power. It removes your ability to adjust as the ball carrier adjusts his path. 
That was early in the season, and this is as we started bowl practices late in the year down in Florida. And in fact, this is when we first got started and, and getting guys back into the mode where they finish the drill and do it perfectly. Buzzing the feet. That was a good job by 40. And here I've got the ball carrier moving as we approach him, uh, so we have to adjust and move our feet. That was a poor finish by 42. That was a good finish by 6. Good job buzzing the feet by 11. Like to see a little stronger. Um, holding that bag where he doesn't just let himself get driven back, allowing 11 to fit and finish. That's a good job by 34. Good job by 48. I'd like to see just a little better finish at the end. where uh, the ball is definitely outside. I've got to leverage the sideline. I want to fit inside out. I want to close the distance, buzz my feet, not stopping my feet, uh, but stay inside out. And if I were to miss the tackle, I'd want to miss it outside where my help is at as opposed to it crossing my face. We'll talk more about the angle tackle specifics as we get uh, as we move on through the throughout this tape. I'd like to see 33 try to get his hat across. 57's a long snapper. We uh, have our long snappers in our drills with our linebackers. 53 is a long snapper, uh, teaching them the proper mechanics on, on tackling and the confidence to do so. Good job now. The ball carrier has the ability to cut back, and I want to make sure the linebacker stays inside out on the ball. Inside out. His feet moving. And that's why he lost the ball carrier at the end. Keep the feet moving. Same thing with 38. Overran the football. Settle with the outside foot in the crotch. Keep the feet moving. Okay, good job by 42, but a bad finish. 57 stopped his feet, long snapper. Good job by six. Levin's a freshman having his issues right now. Good job by 33 staying inside out. But again, I, I'm, I'm not real pleased with uh, some of the finishes. Now you're going to see some game footage of examples of linebackers uh, using the fundamentals that we just taught in the different agility drills. Uh, big one, shuffling, watching number 31 shuffle and move his feet as he puts himself in perfect position to make a square tackle with his knees bent, uh, head and eyes up, and, and shuffling 
in order to put himself in position, not lunging, not running, not ducking his head, which we'll talk more about tackling in a minute. Watching 31 again. Stalking, closing, working downhill, closing up on the ball carrier, staying low, staying square, buzzing his feet. Watching 31 again, moving his feet, and you really should be able to look at all three linebackers and just about every play that you see on this DVD and see the same fundamentals uh, reinforced play after play. Forty five. Watching number 40. Linebackers obviously have to defeat a blocker. This first drill is set up. Uh, in order to help a linebacker take a first good step uh, as to not fault step and, and cost himself time and space as he progresses towards the blocker to defeat the blocker uh, to achieve his objective, which is getting to the football. The bag behind the player's feet are so a player doesn't step backwards before he goes forwards, which is often the case. The planks simulate maintaining a wide base and then I really want to buzz my feet as I get my direction, my stimulus, my guard is going right or left, and that linebacker wants to step in that direction, and he wants to buzz his feet and take many short steps, not long loping steps, uh, prior to making contact and upon making contact with a blocker. If he has a foot in the air when he makes contact, he's going to be on less than uh, a full surface and, and not uh, able to give a blocker all of his body in order to uh, defeat that blocker and moving towards the ball. So he wants to take a good first step, he wants to buzz the feet, and then he wants to attack with his inside foot up. Important that the inside foot is up because if my outside foot's up, I'm going to get turned inside out and create a vertical seam in the defense. I can't get off a block unless I have good inside hand position. The offensive player trying to block me is also trying to gain inside hand position. I want to attack the blocker with my elbows in and my thumbs up. I want to violently attack him with thrust my hips, attack it and lock it out. I'm not pushing the bag, I'm not slapping the bag. I'm grabbing it and taking control. You don't have to do this drill with the bag, you can just attack a man as well. Want to fit it, lock it out, and hold it. Get used to shooting the hands as they make contact with a blocker rather than forearms. Forearms get grabbed. I can't disengage. I can't get off a block unless I get separation. Now this next drill, as I'm fitted up on the blocker, my command is going to be lock out, and the linebacker is going to thrust the blocker out. I'm going to reload, lock out, and shed. And I want to violently shed the blocker in the direction of the ball carrier. I'm fitted up, I've made contact, my hands are inside, and then i got to lock it out. Now, when you look at this last snap, I want to illustrate a point. 31 is in position to make a play. 
I'm not thrusting upfield because I would miss the ball carrier. The ball carrier is going to be running right by me. So I'm shedding, and I'm going to find the ball carrier and put myself in position to go make a play. 46 is not in position to make a play. The difference between always being in a good low square, that stance position where I have balance and, and um, where I have a good hitting surface, and I can flatten to make a play, whereas you can see 46 is not even on the ground, and he is certainly not in a balanced position in position to go make a play. It's all about doing little things well all the time. This is how I coach the drill. I do this entire sequence that you're watching in about 10 to 12 minutes. Fit it up, lock out. Reload, fit it up, lock out, shed. Shed, stay low. Now, the stun technique. I'm going to back the blocker and the linebacker up a yard. It's a good way to teach the linebacker to put the earlier fundamentals, shooting the hands, fitting and locking out and shedding a blocker all together. This is not a speed drill. I want to go through the mechanics uh, where I punch, fit, lock, and shed in that order, not all simultaneously. I want to punch, fit, lock, and shed. So that blocker day after day, uh, week after week, is getting the proper mechanics and fundamentals of d taking on and defeating a blocker. Now, I do this drill where it's, it's not a... Uh, a real physical drill where I'm teaching uh, 31 and 46 to keep their head up, their eyes open as they attack that blocker, fit it, lock it, and shed it. Punch, fit, lock, and shed. 54 does a good job of keeping his feet buzzing. All these players are staying low as they shed in position to go take on a ball carrier. Now, uh, then I progress to a stun drill where I'm going to take on three blockers, finish with a tackle, good low and square. These three blockers are all as if they're independent plays. When I'm shuffling, you can see I would tell that 16, the ball is right, so he attacked with his right foot, right foot, and then coming back the other way with his left foot. The ball is right. Uh, the ball carry is 58. ball is right, so I got right foot, right foot, left foot, Punch, fit, lock, and shed. My uh, emphasis here is not to be too heavy on the blocker. I want to uh, punch him uh, right in the crown of the nose, put him on his heels, take the wind out of his sails, and then progress on to the ball carrier. My objective is not the blocker. My objective is the ball carrier. The blocker is an obstacle. So I want to shock the blocker, get separation, shed, and move on towards the ball carrier. Uh, 31, uh, Paul is just a little bit heavy on the blocker there. You can see the person, or you can put a bag. I have uh, the person number one there. I, I like the idea of them just having to shuffle around an obstacle and work on towards the next blocker, which I think is a little bit more realistic. 45 really elongates his feet as he makes contact. That does not happen in game situations because it can't. Things happen just a little bit too quick. So I, I don't uh, overly concern myself uh, with that part of it when I have a player that overextends. I uh, used to, and then I've, as I watched a lot of game tape, I can see where it really didn't matter. Now I have a sled that I like uh, to break up the stun drill routine, and um, I'm getting my players to react to a stimulus. A uh, guard's hat going right or left where they got to step and shuffle, buzz the feet, lead with the hands, punch, fit, lock, and shed, shed and uh, shuffle back. This part of the stun drill just gets a good four to five second burn going, uh, which all of those uh, drills do in uh, teaching a linebacker to stun.